be with you in the Lord's house this day. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, if you ordered poinsettias, you may take those with you this morning after church. Uh, and an announcement I never thought I'd make on Christmas Day in Minnesota. If you were here last night and left an umbrella, <laughs> of all things, yes, there is, was an umbrella left, left, left last night. So uh, never thought I'd make that announcement, but uh, there it is. Uh, Art of service is printed, and it's up on the screens uh, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior once again. Uh, our opening hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Uh, blessings to all of you this day. Christ is the light of the world, the light of our and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, glory as the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we see it for our next hymn, A Great and Mighty Wonder.
Testament reading for this, the Nativity of our Lord, is from Isaiah chapter 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The epistle reading is from Hebrews chapter 1. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him.
Let us stand together as we read the gradual. To us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. I have believed in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance. Him. I am so glad when Christmas comes.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, very familiar words in our gospel reading today. At least I hope they are. They're familiar because we hear them every year on Christmas Day. The reading from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Familiar words, precious words, words that, that teach us, teach us who Jesus really is. Not a mere baby, not a mere man, but the Almighty, the All-Knowing, the Eternal, the Creator God in the flesh. And, and not just any flesh, our flesh. God becoming one of us to save all of us. These are important words. For John will later say in his gospel that... There is no other by which we can be saved. Right? No mere man can save himself. And there is no other God. Only this God. This God made flesh for us. This God to die for us. This God to die for our sins. This one can save us. Save us from sin and death and give us what only he is and what only he has, eternal life. So these are the most important words in all the world that all need to hear, that God wants all to hear, that all believe the Savior come to us and that through faith they would become children of God. Children, we heard, born not of flesh or of blood, nor of the will of man, but born of God. So the Christmas story is, it's not just a story about Jesus' birth, but it's a story of our birth. The Son of God who was born a son of man, that we, sons of men, might be born again as children of God. And so it is a story that takes place not just in Bethlehem, but here and wherever the word is proclaimed and believed. The word of God through which the Holy Spirit worked and conceived Jesus in the womb of Mary the Word of God through which the Holy Spirit works now to conceive faith in our hearts. The faith of the children of God. So within these words that are so familiar, that are so precious, that are so important, are, are other words. And, and they might get glossed over because of the magnitude of these. Right? The words about John. Right, we heard those. John, who came as a witness. John is important. Because if Jesus was born, lived, died, rose, and ascended, but no one knew about it, right, it would all be in vain. Right? It would be like getting up this morning, gathering around the Christmas tree before you come to church, right, with all the gifts under the tree, wrapped just right, and no one opens them. The gifts are there, but not received. So too an unproclaimed Jesus comes as God's gift, but not received. Which is in fact what we heard this morning from John. Right? Jesus, the word made flesh, was in the world. This world made through him, right? his creation, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. We don't have to ask why. I mean, we know why. The darkness and the blindness of sin. 
sin which has devastated us and our world more than we can fathom. It's what we're used to. It's all we know. And so it, it seems normal. It seems even right, but it's anything but. And it's done such a number on us that many look at creation and, and see not a creator, but an accident that just happened. That many think what God calls good is not good. What God calls right is wrong, and what God calls wrong is, is right. That we fight for and hold on to what doesn't last, and we let go what does. And that has many even believing that, that death is just a part of life, right? which is just crazy. And so the one in whom the perfection and life came into this world of sin and death to shine the light of God's love and forgiveness in the dark, in this darkness, in this unloving, in this unforgiving place. And John was sent, sent to bear witness about this light that all might believe. Which is strange. You usually don't need someone to tell you about light right you see it you see the light except if you're blind right if you're blind the light doesn't help at all and sin sin has blinded us and so John speaks John bears witness words that enter not the eyes but the ears, that we believe what we cannot see, that, that this baby that looks like any other baby is unlike any other. This is the Son of God, that this man that looks like any other man is not like any other, but this is the promised Savior. That this dead and condemned criminal on a cross that looks like any other dead and condemned criminal on a cross is not like any other. But this is the one who was condemned to die for you. That you live. And while it looked like darkness overcame the light when Jesus died on the cross, it did not. John was right. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus' resurrection conquered death and darkness once and for all. And so in Jesus, darkness cannot overcome you either. I know maybe at times it feels like it. At times it, it looks like it. At times it seems like it. But believe the word that enters not the eyes, but the ears. The word that spoke in the beginning and all things came into being. The word that became flesh and dwelt among us and the word which still speaks to you today, making you children of God. A gift, a gift that even death cannot take away. Even then. The darkness of the grave will not overcome you, you who are in the light. John speaks the word. John, we're told, bears witness to the word. A better translation of that would be a martyr, right? John martyrs. He became a martyr for it. For the darkness hates the word. The darkness wants to defeat the word. The darkness rages against the word. And so it attacks John. And it kills him. But because of Jesus, with, with each attack, with each death, the darkness doesn't deepen. Actually, it becomes less. The darkness cannot destroy the church of Christ. 
but it only hastens its own end. You see, each martyr throughout history, a, another light of truth in the darkness, which you are as well. You are. When you answer hate with love, when you answer sin with forgiveness, when you answer hurt with kindness, when you answer evil with good, when you answer wrong with right, and when you answer the lies with truth. When all this comes upon you, the darkness is not overcoming, the darkness is not winning, the darkness cannot overcome the light, the light of Christ that lives in each and every one of you. You see, in that way, each of you are a martyr as well, a witness to the light. So each of you, beautiful, reflecting the beauty of Christ, reflecting the beauty of his love, reflecting the beauty of his forgiveness. And that, that's what Isaiah said today, right? How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings news, good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. What better news than the news we proclaim today? The good news that yes, our God reigns. Right? Not just far away, far away in heaven or in a long, long time ago in a place called Bethlehem. No, here, now, for all people. For his love and his forgiveness is for all people. Here for you. Here in the word, the good news proclaimed. Here in the washing and the forgiveness of baptism. Here in the life and salvation of the body and blood of Jesus in the supper. Yes, right here. Our God reigns. Right here, our God reigns against all the raging of the darkness of sin, death, and the devil. And the darkness cannot overcome him. And so as we also heard in the book of Hebrews this wonderful Christmas morning long ago at many times and in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets but now now in these last days he has spoken to us by his son his son speaking to you words of life and love it's all you need no others all you need in, is this word. For if you have this, you have him. And if you have him, you have life. No matter what else you have or don't have in this world. No matter how much you have, how little you have, no matter how high you are, how low you are, you have the greatest gift of all. Because today, light has come into the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. And so we rejoice. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. And we will see it forever. So really and truly, joy to the world. Amen. The peace of God, the peace that surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus, your Lord. Amen. Service continues as we gather our offerings to the Lord.
us stand together as we continue in our prayers. Lord, all the ends of the earth will see your salvation. Lift our hearts to hope and joy in the celebration of our Savior's birth, that we would manifest this joy and witness to the world. Lead us to know and confess with all joy the good news of our Savior, that those who hear may rejoice with us and the holy angels to worship Christ, the newborn King. Lord, you have comforted your people and bared your holy arm for our salvation. Preserve those threatened by persecution for the sake of Christ. Grant courage, comfort, and peace to those who suffer danger or violence. Give peace, Lord. Look on the nations of this world. Give them a spirit of peace so that conflicts would cease and reveal through the birth of Jesus your great salvation. Lord, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome. Give peace to the troubled in mind and heart. Deliver them from the taunts and temptations of the evil one. Enable us to help them with compassion. Mercifully grant healing, relief, comfort, and peace to all the sick, to those who suffer, to the dying, and to those who care. Bless doctors, nurses, and all medical professionals and caregivers in their service of aid and comfort. Let all rejoice in the good news of Christ, our light, and our salvation. Father, the great love you laid your Son in a manger also lays his flesh and blood before us in bread and wine. Grant us grace to bow our hearts before him with all those in heaven and on earth who adore him, that we may receive his forgiveness and life with repentance and joy. And Lord God, in the birth of your Son, you have called people from every time and place into his body, the church. We give you thanks for the believers who went before us, especially who are with us in Christmas's past and now live with you. Grant us your confidence in your promise of the resurrection and eternal life, and bring us with them at last into your presence. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue as we sing together the liturgy as we prepare to come to the The Lord be with you. Oh, come, let us lift our hearts unto the For in the mystery of Jesus, the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, so that having seen you in the person of your Son, we may be drawn to the love of things unseen. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the saints on earth and those in heaven, we magnify your glorious name as we praise you and sing.
Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
body and the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you. May it preserve you steadfast in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart now in his peace. Amen. And amen. Let us stand together as we sing the thanksgiving. God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled to constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. service this Christmas morning with joy to the